What's up, guys? Hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to part three of What If Cell Was Good. Now, during the seven-year time skip to the Buu Saga, Cell spends most of his time training with Goku and Vegeta. He has also formed a good connection to both Gohan and Piccolo. Between Goku being alive, Cell, and Piccolo, Gohan has actually not stopped training, and he's pushing himself to become the strongest, and as we all know, his potential runs really deep. Goten is also born during this time, and he spends his days hanging out with Trunks. He also has a strong bond with Cell as well. Sometimes, Cell creates Cell Juniors to train with Goten and Trunks. Cell is sort of everyone's pal, and when he's not training, he's helping Bulma with her research. He is a genius after all. Now with Goku alive, it's actually his idea to get everyone to fight in the World Martial Arts Tournament. The roster this time is going to be Goku, Vegeta, Cell, Piccolo, Krillin, Tien, Yamcha, Gohan, Goten, and Trunks. Now the tournament continues as usual, but this time when Gohan gets jumped by Spopovich and Yamu, he's actually much more powerful. He breaks free from Shin's control and actually scares the Majin warriors away. They aren't going to wait for Shin to tell them this time. The warriors are going to follow him now. Cell, Goku, Vegeta, and Gohan go ahead. And everyone else stays back and continues to fight in the tournament. When Spopovich and Yamu land at Babidi's feet, they don't even get a word out. Cell and Vegeta launch key blasts, destroying them in front of their masters. Deborah tries to spit on one of them, but the fighters are way too fast. Gohan lunges. He's itching to fight, especially after these cowards hurt Videl. While they fight, Cell, Goku, and Vegeta follow Babidi down into his ship. Supreme Kai telepathically warns them not to release too much energy because Majin Buu will hatch. This trio has no difficulty getting past any of Babidi's minions and they follow him straight down into Buu's egg. Babidi desperately tries to search for evil but he can't find any and before he can teleport them away he gets erased by Cell. By the time Shin and Kabito land, Goku, Vegeta and Cell have already brought up Majin Buu's egg. Gohan actually finishes his fight with Deborah and flies over to the Kais and his father. The Buu saga actually ended in a record like two minutes. Shin and Kabito don't have words. They thank them immensely and actually offer all of them the opportunity to train with them. And this time, Gohan and Cell actually accept. Gohan wants to learn to control his rage and find a different path of power to reconcile his hybrid nature. Him and Videl still get together before they leave for the Kai planet. Honestly, with the characters being so overpowered, it is so hard to write an interesting Buu saga without some insane bad luck. I honestly just feel like it's better to just blaze past it and follow a different path of storytelling. Buu's birth in canon is just a series of bad luck and decisions. Now back at the tournament, Trunks wins the kids tournament and the finale ends up being Krillin 18, Yamcha, Tien, and Piccolo. Mr. Satan is also present in the Battle Royale, but no one's going to play his games. 18 actually ends up winning once again. She is the OG android after all, but I guess you could say Krillin is the real winner here. Now, during the five years-ish towards the start of Dragon Ball Super, Cell and Gohan have actually learned a whole host of techniques from the Kais. This includes the Kai Kai, which allows them to visit Earth frequently. Cell actually learns of God Key prior to the arrival of Beerus. And the duo is going to break the Z-Sword, freeing Elder Kai, and as a reward, he unlocks Gohan's potential. But this time, with there being no rush or timetable, all of Gohan's potential gets drawn out. The process is really boring and takes days, but Gohan's power is indescribable. Cell actually gets offered the same thing, but he declines. Now, Cell is curious about the hierarchy of the gods, and he learns about them from the Kais. At this point, him and Gohan have far surpassed everybody on Earth. They are the strongest warriors. Gohan's power is truly awe-inspiring. And Cell actually believes that even though Gohan got his power drawn out, that he has another transformation hidden away. Now, the day of Beerus' arrival comes, and he arrives straight to Bulma's party. Gohan, Cell, and all the other Saiyans are going to be there this time. Beerus questions them about the Super Saiyan God, and Cell is perplexed. He says he's never actually encountered nor heard of one. Where in the hierarchy of deities would one even reside? Beerus says he doesn't know, but he's had a premonition, and of course, he's going to fight with Goku, Vegeta, Gohan. None of them match his power, but he does remark that Gohan is something special. He then offers Cell to fight and says he has some Saiyan in him, 
and it appears he has a trace amount of god key as well he also tells gohan that he has a certain amount of god key as well it's not enough to be declared a god but it is enough to be detected by an expert such as beerus cell surmises that he is not a super saiyan god he's not actually technically a saiyan this is when goku suggests just asking shenron to wish one here of course, when Shenron arises, he says that they cannot wish one because one does not exist, and he explains the ritual of becoming a Super Saiyan God. In a game of rock, paper, scissors, Goku is selected to become the first Super Saiyan God. Gotta give Bro some fight in this story. Beerus, of course, wins, and he's actually not satisfied at the fight that just happened. Despite Goku being much stronger in canon, Beerus is actually all warmed up and ready to go. Now this is when Cell decides to step up, going Golden Cell. He pushes Beerus even further, and Beerus is having a blast. He launches a Hakai at Cell, and Cell is actually able to redirect this destruction energy, a feat only few mortals have ever achieved. He still doesn't stand a chance against Beerus, but he has given Beerus the best fight of his life. Impressed with the Warriors, Whis actually offers them a chance to train with him, and he tells Cell one of them could be the next god of destruction should Lord Beerus not be up to par. Gohan, Cell, Goku, and Vegeta all begin their training under Whis. Gohan wants to focus on unleashing his true potential while Goku and Vegeta focus on their god forms. Cell is intrigued by god key and once he learns to harness it, his unique physiology allows him to merge it with his infinite energy engine. Cell can effectively produce infinite god key. As if Bro wasn't overpowered enough. The four warriors continue pushing themselves, and once they begin training inside of Whis' staff, many breakthroughs occur. Cell unlocks a new form, God Cell, while Goku and Vegeta unlock Super Saiyan Blue. And something completely different happens to Gohan, something beastly. Now, there's not going to be any Resurrection F saga in this because between Piccolo and the human androids, the Frieza Force cannot get their hands on the Dragon Balls. They are destroyed before any wishes are made, leaving Frieza in hell. And by the time the Universe 6 tournament comes around, Universe 7 is absolutely broken. The roster this time is Gohan, Goku, Cell, and Vegeta. They decide to take the 4 on 5 disadvantage. And this time, the first one up is actually Gohan, and he is super fired up for this. He's actually got time off from work, and Gohan has balanced being both a Saiyan and a Scholar perfectly. He finally has the balance within himself that he's craved since youth. Gohan easily crushes both Botamo and Frost. And beating Frost was kind of therapeutic for him. He's healed his inner child with that win. Mageta really isn't a challenge either, despite Champa trying to cheat. Gohan naturally talks shit when he's confident anyways. But when Kaba comes up against Gohan, he's actually happy to see another young Saiyan warrior. Kinda reminds him of himself. Gohan is curious and asks if his Saiyans can also go Super Saiyan. Now Kaba is confused. Gohan's been using his ultimate form and hasn't used Super Saiyan in a while. But he decides to transform into the Golden Warrior for Kaba, who's shocked at this. He humbly begs to be taught, but Gohan doesn't really know how to explain it. He tells him what his father told him, and that's that the power comes in response to a need, not a desire. Gohan launches a Kamehameha at Kaba, and as he tries to push it back, Gohan unleashes more and more power, overwhelming the young warrior. Hoping this desperation will trigger something in Kaba, unfortunately Kaba is unable to transform. He felt like his eyes flashed, but that was about it. After being knocked out of the ring, he thanks Gohan and tells him that he will train to achieve this form. Vegeta scoffs, saying Gohan's too soft to teach a Saiyan how to transform. Now finally, Universe 6's final hope hit is up, the legendary assassin. And he's not impressed with Gohan's flair. Gohan's confidence has grown into full-on cockiness, and when hit strikes him without moving, that confidence turns into fear. He puts his guard up, and he struck again. He's confused. How is Hit breaking through his defense? He's not even moving. Gohan is hit a few more times before collapsing to his knees, and he realizes while Hit is moving incredibly fast, he can anticipate his movements because he's only going for his vital spots. With this knowledge, Gohan successfully blocks and counters Hit's strike. 
And this is when Goku yells out after learning from Jocko that Hit is time skipping. Hit laughs, saying that the warrior is right, and Gohan thanks his father, going into his ultimate form. Now he's the one that begins pushing Hit back, countering after defending against Hit's critical blows. Hit takes a second to seemingly power up, but he's actually adjusted his time skip. Improving his technique, he overwhelms Gohan defenses, but right before Gohan is knocked out, he begins powering up, unleashing a raw monstrous power, something that no one has yet seen before. With a giant smirk and even gianter hair, he unveils his new form. Beast Gohan, the culmination of his hybrid nature and his ultimate form, imbued with God Key. This form has the ferocity of Super Saiyan Rage and the calm of Ultimate fused into one epic look. It's not even close. Beast Gohan absolutely mollywops Hit. Hit is unable to adapt fast enough and he is promptly knocked out of the ring. Gohan powers down and nearly collapses. He is exhausted but victorious. Beerus begins celebrating but it's cut short as Zeno arrives. He's upset that he missed this tournament and he thinks it would have been a lot of fun. Zeno suggests that they, maybe they should do it again, and Goku jumps in excited as he didn't get to fight. A giant multiverse tournament would be epic. Zeno gives Goku the summoning button here and tells him to summon Zeno whenever he's ready to have this multiversal tournament. Now, while Zeno may have missed the tournament, someone didn't. Multiversal peeping Tom Zamasu has been watching, and he's disgusted. And with that, we're going to end this week's episode, but please hit the like button and comment below your favorite part so far. And don't forget to hit that bell icon so you can catch the finale right when it airs, because the future Trunks arc and the Terminator Power are going to be insane. Trust me.